church. We begin on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Genesis. God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and his son, Isaac, he, he cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there and we will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked together. Isaac said to his father, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood on in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withhold your son, your only son from him. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his own son. So Abraham called the place, the Lord will provide. And it said to this day, on the mount of the Lord shall it be provided. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Psalm today is Psalm 13. It can be found on page 597 in the Blue Book of Common Prayer. How long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I have perplexity in my mind and grief in my heart day after day? How long shall my enemy triumph over me? Look upon me and answer me, O oh Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, lest I sleep in death. Lest my enemy say I have prevailed over him and my foes rejoice that I have fallen. But I put my trust in your mercy. My heart is joyful because of your saving help. I will sing to the Lord, for he has dealt with me richly, and I will praise the name of the Lord Most High. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness, for sin will have no dominion over you, 
since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and lesser iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death, but now you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God. The advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the one who made us in love, who saved us for love, and who loves us still. Amen. 
We have come to the end of Jesus' missionary discourse in the Gospel of Matthew, the second of his great teachings. In this discourse, you may remember that Jesus has been teaching, sending, authorizing those who have committed themselves to him, those that we call disciples. He has been challenging them to embody what it is to walk the way that he walks, that he calls taking up one's cross and following him. He has been giving them a gift, if you will, of partnership in ministry, a partnership that sent them out two by two, but with no extra clothes, no purse, no staff, no reservation ahead at the local B&B, just ahead to teach, to heal, to proclaim that the kingdom or the reign of God has begun on earth as it already is in heaven. To proclaim what this reign of God is and what it looks like as they have already been taught by Jesus. You remember it began at Christmas time. It began with the self-sacrificing love of God, God giving of God's very self to become one of us, God in the flesh, in the most vulnerable and dependent way possible, God in infant human flesh, not in the seats of power, not with a triumphant victory or fanfare, but to a little couple born in a little town in the most vulnerable and dependent way possible. It began there with this self-sacrificing love that God displayed as God became intimate flesh among us and grew and grew up. And as Jesus began to teach and emerge into his public ministry, and to demonstrate in the flesh what this self-sacrificing love looks like. Jesus consistently went to the places that no one else would go and demonstrated that the reign of God is characterized by these great reversals. The reversals that we heard just recently, that whoever loves mother or father or brother or sister more than me is not worthy of me, Jesus said. That whoever does not take up one's cross and follow is not worthy of me, he said again. He also said that whoever would like to find or seeks to find his or her own life, they must lose it in order to find it. The great reversals, the beginnings in littleness, the continuings in the margins, and the proclamations that to find life, one has to lose it, characterize the whole of the missionary discourse. And it is with these gifts that Jesus sends out the disciples, sends them out, an essential characteristic of the church sends them out. A church cannot be contained. It must be sent in order to be the church. And then Jesus says at the very end of this discourse, whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. And captures in the whole of this discourse, this primary, primary ethic of the reign of God, that welcome in my name, a Hebrew idiom in my name, that means to attend to or honor the identity of the other, <clears throat> not just because they look like you, not, certainly not, because they're one of your tribe, but that welcome Hospitality is an ethic of being human. 
and it is characteristic of the reign of God. Whoever extends this welcome will receive reward. Whoever is willing to proclaim the word of God as the prophets did, whoever is willing to practice justice and mercy as a righteous person does, whoever is willing to go to the lengths that it must have been to find a cold cup of water in the middle of the desert, receives their reward by receiving God and the possibility of entertaining angels. Jesus says at the end of this discourse, this discussion, teaching of what it is to be the church, that it is gathered in welcoming, honoring the essential identity of the other. And for Christians, that identity is grounded in all people being created in the image and likeness of God. And in that hope and in that trust, Jesus sends his first disciples and so sends us into the terrors and blessings of what it is to pick up one's cross and walk the way of love. To pick up one's cross and be sent into the world to welcome those made in the image and likeness of God, regardless of their tribe, regardless of where they come from, regardless of how they make their living, regardless of what they stand for, or don't, as the case may be. Jesus gathers into the end of the missionary discourse the profound reversals that characterize the reign of God on earth as it already is in heaven, that it begins in sacrificial love to the most vulnerable, that it goes out with all of the possibility of being sent like sheep among wolves, and welcomes with honor and attention to the identity of the other, and that in that gift one will find one's life, and one has one's reward the way of love, which is the way of truth and life. In this time in which we are living now, where we are gathered in our homes watching, perhaps, or, or gathered with friends watching, where we are challenged to stay at home, to wear masks, to socially distance for the sake of the other, in this time where we are being challenged mightily to reflect and evaluate and to listen deeply to others' stories about what it means to be human and to be American and to be people of color. We are challenged to remember that the reign of God is characterized by reversals, that it did not come to the seats of power. It came in littleness, in vulnerability, independence, that it did not come in triumphalism, that it came even against oppression. We are challenged to remember that we in the church are sent, that it is the essential nature and character of the church to be sent into places that others would not go. And even as we practice the disciplines of this pandemic, social distancing and mask wearing and staying at home as much as possible for the sake of love, we can be praying and we can be reflecting on the challenges that also confront us. The challenges of racism, the challenges of injustice, the challenges of what it means to be a first responder in the midst of all of this. The challenges of what it means to have loved ones at risk. The challenges of what it means to hear the mourns and laments 
of people of color that have waited generations to speak. The challenges of what it means to be human in the midst of this, as we call ourselves Christians and Americans. What does it mean to welcome, to honor the identity of the other, to give a cold cup of water to the very least? Now let's proclaim together our historic Christian faith in the form of the Nicene Creed, which is found on page 358 of the prayer book. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with his creatures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
with the Father and the Son he has worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us pray together the prayer that we have been taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Prayers of the people this morning are found on page 388 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the Church and for the whole world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name and all whose faith is known to you alone may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them to the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we do also pray for the leaders of this nation, for our President Donald, for our Governor Jared, for our Mayor Nick, they may know your wisdom, that they may be able to discern your ways of peace. We pray for our presiding Bishop Michael, for our Bishop Kim, for our clergy and our lay leaders and ministers, that we may truly love as we have been loved. We pray for all first responders. We pray for those who are suffering for what is right. We pray for those who stand in opposition to injustice. We pray for all those who are hurting. And we ask for the ministry of your spirit to be with each, to guide and enfold them in all of their duties and responsibilities, in all of their choices. And 
gracious God, those good things we dare not ask for, those good things which we often cannot pray for, we do ask for the good of your people, and we pray in the name and for the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ. confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most, Most merciful God, God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, deed by, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are to be sorry if we don't we repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Now may the God of Abraham and Sarah, of Jesus Christ, born of our sister Mary, and of the Holy Spirit, who broods over the whole of the earth as a mother over her children, bless you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen.